those who have been in previous presentations, uh, Cruz has been involved in the majority of them. Agricultural specialist with the UTRGV Beginning Farmer and Rancher Project. Uh, he's been he's been with UTRGV since uh, 2012, back when we were UTPA, um, and he works with with small scale producers with specialty crop production. Uh, he's a specialist in in building high tunnels, uh, building structures for the for the uh, product for season extension. Um, uh, grape grafting, drip irrigation, a number of different topics he's a, he's a specialist in. Uh, he also owns and manages Salinas Family Farm, where they specialize in tomato, strawberry, and asparagus production, among among other things. Um, and previously, Cruz, uh, he was a farm worker until the age of 17, worked for 30 years in the ag equipment industry here in the Rio Grande Valley, and he worked for seven years for the USDA Kika de la Garza Research Center um, uh, on, on crop, especially crop research projects. And Cruz is going to present today the follow-up from last week, where he talked about about growing dragon fruit and and what's involved with that. Today he's going to talk about building those those uh, those concrete posts to to actually support the very heavy dragon fruit uh, plant. So Cruz, please go ahead and take it over, sir. Uh, thank you, Colin. Uh, I've been uh, growing uh, dragon fruit, uh, uh, also known as uh, pitaya, for for about uh, seven years now. Uh, it, it, it's been uh, an experience. Uh, I've tried several different methods of actually trellising uh, uh, the dragon fruit. And uh, after uh, several trials, uh, I decided that uh, using the, the concrete post was uh, the, the best thing uh, for me, uh, especially that because I, I was going to go commercially. The, uh, the steps in uh, building the, the concrete post uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a little complicated, but it, it's really simple. Once once you do one, uh, all the everything else is monotonous. You just just keep doing it over and over. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with a with a presentation because there's quite a few slides. First of all, uh, we'll start uh, with with the tools required uh, for uh, building the concrete uh, post. Uh, first, uh, you'll need a, a trough. Uh, then uh, you'll need a hoe to, to, to mix the concrete. You'll, you'll need a, a shovel to, to shovel your, your mix uh, into your form. Uh, you'll need a, a drill uh, for drilling the, the screws to put uh, the uh, boards together. You're going to need a 7 16 uh, wood bit. You'll need a hammer, uh, some wire cutters, uh, measuring tape, and uh, a container uh, uh, to fill the, the mix uh, with water. Uh, I use this uh, container that's already marked uh, with a gallon so I can get pretty accurate as far as the water uh, quantity that I'm going to be using. The materials needed uh, to make the form and the reason I made this form is like I said I, I, I wanted to make about 40 or 50 of these concrete, concrete posts so I went ahead and uh, uh, when made the the expense of, of, of buying the materials and actually there's three sets of materials that I use because I was building three three posts at the same time. Uh, the materials uh, required are two uh, two by four uh, by seven foot uh, boards. Uh, you're going to need uh, one uh, two by eight by seven foot. Uh, you'll need uh, two short pieces. Uh, You'll need uh, some rebar. Uh, the rebar is actually, uh, in this case that I used, uh, 3 eighths uh, by 8 feet. You're going to be needing uh, the, the screws to, to attach uh, the boards all together. And uh, you'll be needing some, uh, some wire, uh, one roll of wire to uh, brace uh, the, the, the rebar. You'll also be needing, um, of course, your concrete mix. Uh, in this particular picture, uh, I might make a note that I, I did use uh, high strength uh, concrete uh, quickery, but I strongly recommend uh, that you use uh, the maximizer uh, concrete mix. Uh, you have different uh, uh, PSIs of, of concrete mix that uh, actually measures the strength of the concrete uh, when, when it dries up and the higher the PSI, uh, the better it holds together. Uh, in this particular case, when I was uh, making the, this uh, presentation, 
they happen to be sold out of, of the maximizer uh, concrete. So we'll be using this high strength uh, concrete mix uh, uh, for, for the demonstration. Uh, first step uh, that uh, we're going to start doing is uh, you're going to start uh, attaching uh, or putting or drilling the uh, screws into your into your boards. In this case, uh, we have the screws uh, pre-drilled into your two by eight uh, board. The, uh, the, the screws are spaced evenly uh, and they don't have to be actually measured. They can just be more or less uh, two feet apart. It's just to hold uh, all these pieces together. I'll be using a 10 by three uh, uh, screws because uh, there is quite a bit of, of weight uh, involved uh, in, in putting these uh, in this form together. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to lay out your two by fours and uh, by, by three and a half and uh, your top board, your two by four by eight uh, in this manner. You'll be laying the, the two by fours on a, a vertical uh, position and you'll be laying the two by eight in a horizontal position. Okay, the, the spacing is going to be uh, seven and a half and I might make a note that even though that we say or you go by a two by four by eight or a, a in this case a, a two by eight, they're not actually four inches in diameter, they're only three and a half. And, and this, this board is, is not a true eight. It's, it's uh, seven and a quarter, I believe. So basically this, this, this two by eight is gonna be on, on the outer edges. And that goes for all your lumber. Even though it's, it says two by four, it's not actually four inches wide. The next step that when you're about to uh, put your screws into your two by four by eights, you wanna make absolutely positively sure that your boards are flush on the outside. This will give you a true measurement on, on the inside. The next thing that you wanna do is on both ends, uh, your front and your back, uh, just mark it by using your two by four uh, piece uh, by seven and a half and using that as a guide, and, and that's how far that this two by four by seven is gonna extend on, on both ends. Once you get it all lined up and uh, in place, go ahead and, and screw your, your two by fours uh, onto your two by eight. And just flip the mold over. Okay, this is what it should look like when it's all put together. Once you have that put together, you're going to get your, your two by four by seven and a quarters, and you're going to mark a, a triangle in the center of, of your two by four by seven and a quarter, and you're going to come down an inch from both ends and you're gonna, on just one board, uh, in this case I had two because uh, I had uh, two molds that I was making, uh, you're going to drill out with your, uh, with your wood bit, your, uh, your 7 16 holes for one end. So in this case, the one that is drilled out is, is gonna be your front end where your rebar is gonna go through and this is gonna be your, your back end. Once you get those drilled out, then you're going to install your, your front uh, drilled out two by four by seven with two wood screws on one end. And you're going to screw the other one on the back end. The next step that you're going to do is, is uh, you're going to install your rebar. 
your rebar is a foot longer than your actual mold. So your rebar is, is going to stick out 12 inches from the front end. Something that I did, and I'll make a note, that when I drilled out the, these two, I went ahead and it, it made it easier for me to hang the rebar on your back end in place. So I took off the one that had no holes and, and I installed the, the one that did have holes. So both front and back, they did have the holes drilled out. And, and basically this was just to hold your, your rebar in place. The next thing that you have to do, and this is kind of tedious and it has to be almost perfect because this is what's gonna uh, strengthen your, your concrete post. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a, 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 just a piece of, of your rebar and you're gonna lay it across the top. You're gonna take your, your wire and you're gonna cut maybe some 12 inch pieces. And basically what you wanna do is on the both, since this is like a triangle, the ones that are on the bottom, you're going to want to lift them up an inch off the top of your bottom two by four by eight. Okay, so the, the right and left bottom ones are up in the air, one inch away from the board, and your center one, which would be the top one, you want it one inch from the top coming down. So basically this triangle is gonna be the same height as this triangle here, as, as your both ends. And in this case, I believe I just did it with one, but uh, I would recommend that, that you do it at least in two places. Once you have everything in place, we're ready to start mixing the concrete. As I mentioned earlier, in this case, I, I, I did put one, but you might make it a little bit stronger by maybe putting maybe two. It just strengthens uh, the concrete uh, post a little bit more. When you start uh, the mixing of the concrete, uh, make sure you have all your stuff ready. Everything is prepared. Everything is close by. Because once you start mixing the concrete, you only have X amount of time before your concrete starts to, to set. Okay. Where if you've never mixed uh, concrete before, it, it's, it's pretty simple. It, it, it's not very difficult to do. Uh, in this case, I am, I'm using a, a, a trough. Uh, you could use a wheelbarrow, you can make your own uh, uh, trough out of uh, lumber or whatever, but I mean, these are not very expensive uh, to purchase. You're going to need your trough. You're going to mix in one 50 pound bag of, of the concrete mix. Um, have your hose so you can mix uh, your, your concrete mix uh, with uh, the water and have your shovel ready so that you can put the concrete mix uh, into your form. The first mix is gonna be 50 pounds of concrete and you're gonna use one and a half gallons of water. Uh, now this is for this 50 pound bag. Uh, normally I would be using an 80 pound bag, but like I said, they didn't have it. Uh, if, if as far as uh, weight is concerned, if 50 pounds is too much or 80 pounds is too much, they do sell it in a 25 pound bag. Uh, so you just have to adjust your water according to the, the weight of the concrete mix uh, that, that you are using.
Once you have your mix in your trough, then you add your water. And I, I pour all the water in it at one time. I mean, I've done this long enough to where I know exactly how much water it takes. So I just pour it in and I just start mixing it up uh, back and forth, back and forth a little bit at a time. I'll bring the hoe to this point and bring some of the dry mix in, into the center and I'll walk to the other side and then I'll bring some of this mix uh, and mix it uh, thoroughly till till you have a, a a consistency of not too watery and then not too dry. Um, the the consistency that I like is 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 almost I mean not quite like a soup, but uh, something that I can be able to handle and move uh, without it sticking to. You can see how it's sticking right here. It still needs to be mixed up just a little bit more. Once you have your mix ready, then you're gonna start applying it into the trough. Uh, here's where I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier where you, now you need to start working really fast. I mean, this is probably, I mean, I did it by myself without any problem. If there's a two man team, uh, that, that makes it a lot better and you can go a lot quicker because once you're at this point, then your, your concrete is, is going to start to set. So now you've got to move quickly in putting your mix into your, your mold. Once you have filled or used your 50 pound mix on one side, then you move quickly to, to mix another batch and you go ahead and you fill your other side. Uh, one tip that I do have for y'all, when uh, you all have this uh, uh, mold filled with with the concrete is grab it from this portion right here, lift it up anywhere from four to six inches and just just let it drop about three or four or five times in a row. And what that does is it takes out all your air pockets uh, out of your, your concrete and it makes, it, it fills in all the spaces that haven't, uh, didn't get any mix at all. Then you go to the opposite end and you do the same thing. After you do that, uh, you can get your, your shovel and scrape all the excess uh, from on top, from both sides. And at this point, just to make it a, a little bit prettier, go ahead and lift it up a couple of times and drop it. And, and you can see where all the rocks uh, just settle in and it makes it real nice and smooth and, and it removes uh, the rest of the air pockets. And uh, once you've done, uh, basically this is uh, what you're going to have. You're gonna have your, your cement uh, concrete post uh, ready uh, at this point little that's how it's made comment there you're gonna let it sit like this for at least at least four days uh, in in the mold uh, by the fourth or fifth day uh, your your concrete is gonna start to set it will look hard and at this point you can start uh, removing your your mold uh, sides uh, from the front and back and both sides uh, by taking it apart. Here's where you'll you'll need uh, your hammer sometimes uh, to to pull this out. Remember, you had your wires that were holding up uh, your your rebars. You'll cut those with your wire cutters. You'll turn the mold over and then you start removing your wood screws from your sides on your two by fours by sevens. 
at this point, your mold uh, should be uh, nice and, and it's not gonna be very hard. It's still not cure yet. Uh, uh, but at this point, you're able to, to pick it up, uh, move it around, slide it over. And one of the things that, that I did is when I would take the mold out, I would put the mold where I was going to leave it. I did not want to be moving this around so that it wouldn't crack on me or and stuff like that. So basically what I did is when I took this mold off, I would leave the post in that position uh, for at least at least uh, four weeks before I actually started working with it and putting in the ground. Um, that way, uh, the the concrete is is, is 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 gets really hard, and and you're able to work with it, and it, you're not going to crack it, and you're not going to break it. Now, the width and the length of this one is actually three and a half because it was a two by four, but it, it the actual width is four inches. Uh, and the bag, it tells you, uh, it gives you a little calculation on how long your, your mold is going to take to actually cure to, to, to its uh, fullest. And in this case, uh, this, this post, this particular diameter was going to take three months. So basically what I did is I took the posts after four weeks and I set them in the holes and, and I left them there before uh, I actually planted uh, or started uh, working the, uh, the rebars on top and bending them so that I would not break or crack the, the top end of the wooden post or the con concrete post that is. And uh, here's your final uh, work, uh, your concrete post uh, with the uh, Rebars folded over with your tire on top and your dragon fruit uh, growing out of uh, your concrete post. The, the reason I also shows concrete, I might add, is that this, this dragon fruit takes quite a bit of water. Even though it's in the cactus family, it takes about an inch of water a week or every two weeks. And if you were using a, a wooden post or a PVC pot or a treated post, uh, it, it will eventually rot. And if you're using a PVC pipe, the PVC pipe is not strong enough uh, to withstand the weight of the dragon fruit. The dragon fruit will eventually umbrella out and it, it'll weigh, the mass will be almost, uh, I mean, it can be up to 100 to 150, 200 pounds. Uh, and that's why I use the concrete post. At this point, uh, if we have any questions, Colin? Yeah, um, we do have some questions. Cruz, that was fantastic. Just as a reminder, because again, so, so your presentation was a follow-up um, to last week's where you talked more about the plant, more about the fruit, and, 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 uh, and, and using, um, I think, wooden trellises you were, you were talking about last week. So why, why are concrete trellises so important? I think this relates to, to how big these plants grow, right? And like how, how sort of, you know, like how much support they can need over time. The, the, I guess the, the main reason is because the plant actually... Uh, will grow up to about 20, 25 years uh, if you take care of it. And even though a cedar post uh, or a treated uh, lumber is, is designed, you know, to, to withstand uh, the weather and, 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 and uh, the water from rotting, it, it will not last, you know, more than seven, seven years to 10 years. And at that point, that's when your, your dragon fruit, fruit is in, in full production and uh, you're probably going to have to replace or the, you know, the post is going to break or something like that. So, you know, the best thing to do is, is, is uh, go with a concrete post. Right. So we have a question here from uh, UTRGV's own Robin Chowdhury. Um, could you use T posts instead of using concrete, uh, these, 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 these concrete posts? There, there is actually no right way and no wrong way or no right trellis or wrong trellis. I, I have a, a played with different uh, types of trellises. I've used T-posts. I've used T-posts with, uh, with a her, uh, her, uh, uh, King Ranch wire, which is uh, the one they use for cattle. I used, uh, we've used cattle panels, uh, the six by six uh, uh, trellis. Um, I do have a fence in the backyard that, uh, you know, I've thrown some 
pitaya there where, and just let it grow. I mean, it literally grows anywhere. Uh, but if you're going to go commercially, uh, this would be probably the, the route to go. Right. That makes a lot of sense. And, uh, and, and following up on that, um, so we've had, we had comments, I think, from last week and, and a follow-up question. Uh, when you leave the newly made concrete uh, posts in place for a month after you unmold them, do you cover them with anything? Are you using a tarp? Do they need, need to be protect, uh, protected from water or rain or, or wind or anything? No, actually, I just, I just let them set and I let them dry out. Uh, they're, they're where they were. So uh, it, it, it's, it's now you don't want to set them out in the sun and leave them out in the sun uh, at the beginning if, if, if you're doing it right in the middle of the summer. Uh, it's almost like a concrete slab. You know, you don't want it to dry real fast. So at that point, uh, you would probably, you know, get a garden hose or a bucket and, and maybe pour some water over it so that, you know, it dries slowly. Um, again, from, from, from Robin, he's asking, he thinks he missed it, but um, how do you actually, how are you securing the post once you, once you build them, once they're dried out and cured a little bit, how are you securing them to the ground? I know that there's a bunch of rebar sticking out. You're just, are you, you're digging a hole and just like a, like a post hole digger? Or how are yeah, you it's, it, it's just a regular post. Uh, dig the two foot hole and just drop it in the two foot hole. Now uh, I'm using, uh, in my prior presentation, I used a tire, which was 10 inches uh, deep with uh, more topsoil. So if you're not going to, if you're planning straight flush on the ground, then I'd strongly recommend that uh, you, your hole be, you know, a little bit deeper because it is holding a lot of weight. Now the, the length, or the height of the pole is also not, you know, uh, set in stone. Uh, I mean, the reason that I chose seven foot is that I'm able to harvest uh, the the dragon fruit. Uh, I'm I'm six one, so I'm able to harvest uh, the the fruit without using ladders. Now, uh, if you want to go taller, of course, your plant's going to be much taller. I mean, it's going to produce the 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 leaves much longer. But now you're having to use ladders uh, to harvest uh, the fruit. Now if you're using or you're going to be growing a minimal amount of plants. Uh, maybe that'd be the route to go, uh, you know, to have a taller uh, trellis or, or trell uh, post. That way you can have uh, more area and more, more fruit production. Or in the same token, if you're not as tall and you don't want to be reaching up as high, uh, you can um, shorten the height uh, of your concrete post or any post for that matter. All right, would it be, would it be feasible, because we got a couple questions last time, if you're, if you're building, um, if you're using that tire setup, because the root structure is, is pretty shallow, to set something up where it's, where it, where it's almost mobile, um, because as you go further north, the risk of, of frost is of course higher, and would it, would it then be possible to build something that you could maybe put on a dolly and when you see, when you know the frost is coming in, you can bring it into a garage or a, or a structure. Oh yes, that would be no problem at all. The only thing there that uh, you would have to do is you would need to keep it uh, pruned down uh, to, to a size uh, where you're able to move it uh, without uh, gr it growing to its, its fullest uh, maturity size. And you would probably be pruning it to maybe four or five leaves uh, instead of, you know, 15, 20 or 30 leaves. Yeah, that, that's doable. Interesting. Um, so shout out to, to Annalise who came up with that idea. If you have follow-up questions, again, if it's on dragon fruit or any variety of things for Cruz and for Juan, these are experts. These are, these are locally, state, and almost nationally recognized experts on these subjects. And because growing in the Valley is so, it's, it, it's a unique circumstance. Uh, make sure that you follow up with these with these experts, with these professionals, that's what they're here for is to, is to, is to help people out. And, and that's what we really love to do. Um, so just, just a reminder, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up pretty soon. Um, if we hope we have a few more questions to get through, but the, again, these presentations have been brought to you by UTRGV Center for Sustainable Agriculture and Rural Advancement and, and some of our sponsored projects, the Beginning Farmer and Rancher Project and Texas Rural Cooperative Center. Um, we, we will be holding another training series in probably a month, a month or so. Uh, we're going to try to probably space it out every, every 30 days or maybe 45 days, maybe a little bit longer. Before we end here, some, some uh, final question from Debbie Cox for, uh, for Cruz. 
you were talking about about making sure that you're acting quickly once you're adding water to the to the quick read, that you're acting quickly what's what, what's the approximate window that we're talking about like when do you need to make sure that you have all the concrete in there and that that all the, bu the, the bubbles are tapped out and you've sort of evened out the top of it like how much how much time are we talking about that's all gonna depend really on the actual uh, concrete mix that you get uh, some of them some of it is really really quick drying some of them some of it is slow drying but uh, the one that I used was sort of like in between uh, actually I was spending uh, uh, 15 to 20 minutes in between times and the consistency of the the concrete mix uh, made no difference whatsoever so uh, uh, once again, if you never work with concrete, it, it may be a problem, but if you work with it, sometimes you're able to add just a little bit more water. So the consistency, you're able to work with it. Uh, that's why I tend to pour a little bit more water than I have to, that way it doesn't get hard on me, but, and then just leave it longer for, for, it, for it to cure. That's but it just all end. depends on the brand that, of the concrete mix. And the, and the package will say whether it's fast drying or, or not. Okay, but I think that tip to, to, to add a little bit more water, that seems like a good, a generally good idea. It gives you a little bit more, more flexibility or, or, or wiggle room there. I have another question from, from, from Debbie Cox. What would, what, what's the approximate cost? I know, I, I know you basically have to spread these costs over, you know, a bag of concrete is going to be, you know, maybe a few, a few posts. What's the approximate cost you, would you estimate for, for one of these trellis posts? Uh, you would have to purchase the 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 two by fours, the two by eights, uh, of course the concrete, uh, some of the the wire and stuff like. If you were to purchase all that and not the tools, you know your shovel, your wire cutters, and just the materials, more or less it's about fifty bucks uh, per 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 pole. That's if you're using the maximizer. The maximizer is is kind of expensive, I believe. Uh, It'll, it'll run like eight or nine dollars, but if you buy quite a few bags anywhere you purchase, they, they, they'll give you the contractor price and it lowers the price. So all depending how much, how much concrete you purchase also makes a difference right. in price. Right. But you're not gonna go over $50 per post. Uh, if, if you're doing a whole bunch of them, of course, uh, it, it's the, the dollar amount is not gonna be you know, relative to if you're doing one or you're doing 40, because you're using right. the same form for all, all right. the 40 posts. So. so you're spreading those costs like of yeah. the actual mold oh, yeah. across 40 yeah, posts. Then, 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 I mean, it, it, my average came out, I believe was like, uh, I think it was like $17 a post, $17. Okay. But, you know, and I have, I, I, I did 45, so. And, and then just sort of thinking about, you know, what are the trade-offs here? There's, there's the cost aspect of this. And then there's the sort of, people are either going to be eating all this dragon fruit or going to be selling it. What like a, a, a fully mature productive plant that like you've grown, you know, and, and you're good at this. How, you know, what, what type of yield are we talking about in terms of, I don't know if it's pounds or, or individual pitaya that are actually coming off of it per, per my, growing season. My 40 foot row right now, which uh, has, has, is probably five years old, uh, 40 foot produces, at one time, probably a uh, hundred uh, dragon fruit, and not all of them uh, make it all the way through. Uh, so, and it'll it'll produce start producing in in July. It'll go in, all the way up to probably November. So it does like three three. Uh, you have three good pickings off of it. So, uh, but you know that all depends on on how much you water it, how well you take care of it, the amendment right. you put in. It's just like everything else. You know, I could produce, right. you know, a ton of it and then somebody else just produces half a ton, so. Right, right. And that's, again, another reason to follow up with crews to make sure that you're, that you're following best practices to maximize the, the sort of yield and the quality of the fruit that's coming off of these plants. I think we had questions last time, again, about uh, some people that have grown this in the past that, that, that they, weren't, um, they weren't being pollinated uh, uh, you know, appropriately and, and, and what are, what are different strategies to deal with that. So I just really want to thank, I uh, want to thank everyone who's shown up for this. Um, we've had a really good turnout and really good feedback and, and interaction and we really value your time and just want to thank you so much for coming out and also want to, want to really thank our, uh, our ag experts, 
Cruz Salinas, Juan Regosa. Um, they're fantastic. Uh, they're, they're fantastic uh, technical assistance providers here at the university and, and please take advantage of their availability to, to, to answer questions on this. So, so Cruz and Juan, I just wanna say thanks. Uh, and for everyone, uh, seems like we have a really local audience here. So everyone here in the Valley, thanks for, thanks for tuning in and uh, everyone stay safe out there. And we, uh, and we hope to see you next time.